What up, Naughty Steppers, Bass Lovers, people of the World Wide Web? It's Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel. And it is time for another Extra Naughties monthly roundup. Gonna go over some EPs, albums, and compilations that I wasn't able to review in full, but which I still thought interesting enough to share my opinions on them with you. Shorter reviews because there is a lot to get through, so I'll just be identifying my main points with each one, and hopefully showing you something that you hadn't heard of before. Stuff released on the 29th of May and after will not be reviewed in this video but the next one. Some of the stuff in this video is actually from the end of April. And the projects are covered in alphabetical order by way of artist name or record label name and are all linked in the description box down below. And so kicking off this latest instalment, we have the new EP from Alex Perez. Last Rites. Really enjoying the atmosphere and general warped vibe of this EP. Not big on wow factor, but I don't think that's what it's about. Very deep, spaced out, slightly uncomfortable, subsumes you and has you in a trance for the majority of it. Hypnotic stuff. A couple of the drop sounds are quite out of place, but mostly this project is very rounded and on point. Dipping in and out of consciousness from track one to four, well put together, a solid collection of songs. As expected from AU5, a load of colourful, glitchy, melodic bass music with a decent amount of drop execution lacking or the ideas being flat. A lot of it really is stunning, especially when the kaleidoscopic instrumentals and blissful vocals are brought together. Most of the introductions I would also say are pretty brilliant, with that magical gleam running through the LP. Not to mention the numerous songs over seven minutes. Risky, but I think he navigates that risk really well. Nice amount of genres on offer too. And some of the drops are very rounded, matching idea and ambition with execution, but some really don't do that, and that's what lets Divinorum down. Not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting to like this compilation, it just screamed same bars repeated over and over again to me. And whilst a lot of the production and execution is clean, yeah, on the ideas front, I wasn't proved wrong in any way. Pretty much every song here just drones on and on. A couple fresh sounds, but it's hardly enough to really engage you. Exceptions come from Digitist and The Closer from the curator Ominous. But overall, yeah, not my cup of tea. Ugh. I don't know where to start with this album. Honestly, I can't say there's anything I enjoy about it. Not even a moment. The production is so tinny and bare. None of the ideas grab me. There's just barely anything to it. It's a whole load of meh. And for me, I'm not sure it's fair that this guy gets to play to thousands of people where others make much more accomplished music and will never ever get that chance. The dubstep scene is pretty intimate, so I won't run my mouth anymore, but basically I hope I get to a point where I can discuss these things in depth more. Considering how many big names are on this compilation from Big Beat, it's pretty average, uh, just gonna run you through my highlights. The tracks I would recommend here come from Gentleman's Club, Bro Safari and Tank Parade, Snaus and Dylan Nathaniel. The others just sound a bit weak and rushed in my opinion, so yeah, mixed compilation but I would still check it out because of all the big names on show. Very sharp, extraterrestrial rhythm EP here from Chibs. Some of the ideas are quite laboured, classically of the genre, but most of it is very well cut, shiny and razor-like. Robo-dub with its sprightly alien feel is up there with the best modern rhythm tracks I've heard recently. On the flip side, Grunker is a real dud and near unlistenable, but overall a pretty solid EP. I'm enjoying it. This EP is a mix of truly riveting knockout ideas and others that just don't hold up, again mostly because of percussion. It's typically savage from them, some of it really hits the spot, and other bits don't quite provide that force and thwack. I do like it generally, this style is quite hard to do right, and I think the bits that do work, work very well. But it is an execution thing once more, and that means overall that it is quite the up and down, to and fro experience on a quality level. Been listening to Fall from around 2015, and I must say this is definitely the most impressed I've been since first hearing his stuff. It taps into a lot of what I like about his music, 
that dark, perspective electro feel that naturally tells a story and is very infectious. Not to say that all the tracks are brilliant, but they're all at least good, and the final couple, with entirely different genres, are in my opinion very good. Nice longevity to this EP as well, real sense of scope and body to it, so yeah, overall I would say really, really solid project. Try and think of the most horrifying, ghastly and eerie images you've seen in film. This EP should be the soundtrack to all of that footage. It's honestly your worst nightmare played out through this incredibly enduring, cinematic death step music. Six tracks and over half an hour long. Which is why it's so good. It's that seemingly never-ending bad dream that you just can't escape from. I mean, we've all had them, and this just hits the nail on the head with that. And I mean, as hellish as that sounds, the way it's so fitted to that specific vibe is just awesome. Havel has his style, and long may he keep running with it. Another solid, mostly bro-step EP here from Jarvis, again proving himself in my opinion to be one of the best in dubstep outside of NSD and Disciple. Not as many memorable and sticky ideas on show here in comparison to other recent EPs from him, but the majority of the drop sections here are very, very gripping in sound. He's one of the best in my opinion at springing mad ideas on the listener, blistering sections that just blow you away out of nowhere. Gotta spare some love for track 3, Mumbra, because Mumbacore is a genre that I feel we just need way more of, but overall, yeah, this project, for large parts, does bang. Been enjoying the output of Kazra recently, someone who's definitely grown to become one of my favourite D&B producers over the last year or so, and even though after hearing the first track on this EP, I wasn't overly impressed, the two that follow after that reaffirm my good thoughts entirely. I love the devilish warmth of No Logos and the delicate feathery feel of Cold Wave, both of which hit a certain spot in completely different ways. And the closer I find a bit jagged in its delivery, so for me with this EP the inside is lovely, the coating not so much. Here we have quite an interesting remix album of Levitate's Fatalism, and as with any LP of this kind, there are some tunes I prefer more than others. I'm particularly fond of the edits from Mad Hatter, which has a good amount going on, and AMF who brings grunge to the collection at a good point, but even though I enjoy some of them more, I think they all pay a pretty good tribute to Levitate's futuristic, edgy, almost dystopian style. And in that sense it functions well as a body of work, it's shiny, creepy dark electronic music, delivered in a manner of ways and if that's your thing, then this LP is for you. I have to say I haven't been huge on Lux's style in the recent past, but I've come out of this EP really enjoying his approach to dubstep music. It's very well cut, super clean in the execution, some really beastly sounds in amongst all of that, it's high definition music from the depths of hell. Some of the bits where he brings in the squealing sounds are quite abrasive. Good ideas that I find a bit too much on the ear. But for me overall I'm enjoying it and I think it's pretty unique in its delivery. I know there are some out there that think the exact opposite. But honestly I can't see where they're coming from. This is fresh. This new Mr. Carmack project, whether you see it as an album or an EP at 8 tracks, is very decent. I really enjoy the wonky, oozy theme he starts with before going down a couple more serious avenues, all trap based of course. I mean, bottom line is if you enjoy earthy, experimental trap music, then this is a very reliable set of instrumentals, go check it out. To be honest, I wasn't massively looking forward to hearing this album, and I wouldn't say that ill feeling has subsided that much upon listening to it. It has a lot of what I used to love about metal music, and this style is undeniably unique and important for this scene, but a lot of the execution just isn't there for me. I appreciate the different genres and forms of vocal delivery, some of it is put together really well, but a lot of it is also quite jarring on the ear, and that is difficult to ignore. I do have my favourites here, those that have a particular emotional reach to them, notably the opener and Drown Give Up, the closer Stare Empty, and I know a lot of people out there love this LP, and I will keep re-listening to it throughout the year, but at the moment this album just isn't something I can fully get into. 
I must admit, this is the first collection I've heard from Red Pill, but it's definitely made me want to go back through his whole previous discography. This is anthemic, captivating, seizure-inducing drum and bass music that's big on atmosphere and making you constantly feel on edge in the best way. It's tantalizing stuff, brimming at the surface and ready to explode at all times without ever fully doing that, and that's why it works. A couple of off points here and there, but mostly does very well to transport you to another world over the three tracks, fully recommend for all lovers of bass music. Not gonna lie, I was quite looking forward to this comeback Sadu EP, but having listened to it a few times now, I just don't really think it's for me. Most of these tunes seem stuck in themselves, the force of the music is good, but it needs more variation to really carry them through. As if he knows he's made something decent, to the extent that he just keeps running with it over and over again, which doesn't really work. I actually like most of the introductions, some great vocal samples in here too, but yeah, a lot of the drops just lack in ingenuity and flavoursome execution. In the past, Vorso has been a classic example for me of incredible composition, amazing sound design, but scatterbrain ideas, but this EP changes that a little. Metamaterial for me just feels more aware of its direction than other recent EPs from him, more concentrated on creating moments to hang on to. Not like all six tunes here do that, Vagabond for example reminds me of Vorso at his most random and all over the place, bereft of real feeling pushing it forward. But the general gist with Metamaterial I'd have to say is that it displays a much bigger sense of autonomy and ownership uh, melodically and in terms of all the sounds used. And so there we have it, the May 2019 edition of the Extra Naughties Monthly Roundup. The special mentions are Avance, Black, Boren Ma, Echonova, Invisible, Kuro, Nightbase, Omni, Possage and Um. I'll put the links to all of those in the description box down below. But with regards to the EPs, albums and compilations reviewed in this video, which ones did you enjoy? Which others not so much? Are there any that I missed out? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this roundup video, then be sure to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell along the way. Social media accounts in the description box down below. Next to my head, there should be a link to another Extra Naughties monthly roundup if you're looking for some more dark electronic tunage to explore. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure, as always, to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you legends, every single last one of you, in the next one. Peace out.